Let me get rid of that background. Let me get rid of that background. You guys like the background? I'm going to get rid of it. Let me get rid of it. Welcome to uh, welcome to the Boxing Bookie. Sorry about that. I was messing around with backgrounds. Um, welcome to the Boxing Bookie. Uh, we got a good show for you today. We're going to get into Eduardo Hernandez challenging for Oshaki Forster's uh, WBC Super Featherweight title. But before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, follow text, uh, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, all forms of social media. The Boxing Bookie comes out to you for every big fight. Uh, we usually do three or four fights a week. I'm going to show you how to make money on, on gambling, on betting on boxing. Uh, we don't gamble here. Um, I, I'm in Texas. I use DraftKings. You can't even use DraftKings in Texas. But I do want to show you how to make money um, on boxing if that's something that you do. If, you, if you're into sports betting, if you're into boxing gambling, I'm going to show you how to make money on it. Uh, the bookies, the odds makers, the bookmakers, they don't know what they're doing. Um, I'm going to show you how to consistently make money. I know last week was a tough week. Um, I, I, I was shocked with, um, you know, Santion. Um, I, I was shocked with, uh, Reese Belotti. Um, but we're going to get it all back this week and some, this is a good week to make money on. Uh, we got, we got a good fight here. So I'm going to show you how to make money on Oshaki Forster and Eduardo Hernandez. Please also follow our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. All right. So let's get into this fight. Uh, this is a, a really intriguing fight. Um, you know, I have a general rule of thumb. When you have a pressure fighter and a boxer, a pure boxer and a pressure fighter, at the same level, bet on the pressure fighter. Now, the question is, are these guys at the same level? You know, I, I, um, you know, obviously, I would pick Chavez to beat Paul and Malnagy. They're not on the same level. But I would take Whitaker um, to beat Baby Bull Diaz, right? Not at the same level. So you got to look at it, right? I don't think anyone's at Pernell Whitaker's level, right? But so when you have a pure boxer and a puncher and, 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 a, and a pressure fighter, I would tend to, to take the pressure fight. There's more ways he can win the fight. Uh, he can outwork you. He can stop you, right? The, the boxer's just got to be perfect for 12 rounds or survive. And, you know, it, it, it's just – I if they're at the same level. So the question becomes for this fight, is Eduardo Hernandez at the level of Oshaki Foster, who I think is the best 130 pounder in the world? It's an intriguing question. I've gone back. I've watched a lot of tape or what I could find of Eduardo Hernandez. I watched about three, four fights of a minute, and they're all quick. The Gutierrez fight is quick. Um, you know, he, he gets knocked out quick, or he wins quick. I watched the Jorge Castaneda fight. Um, what were the other fights that I watched? Gutierrez. Um, I watched them all today. Jorge Castaneda, which is a minute and a half. Um, Jorge Cuellar, I guess, was five rounds. And then there was another one I was able to find, too, I think, early in his career. All of those fights are quick, right? And he, and he is not really fighting any pure boxers like Oshaki Foster. So it's really hard to get a gauge on him. Uh, we got a little exposure with him. We saw him fight Jorge Castaneda, where he actually came in as a B-side. Uh, we saw him fight Roger Gutierrez back in 2019, and he got stopped um, in the first round. Um, besides that, we, we've not gotten much from him. We haven't seen a lot of him. And Eduardo Garza was the other fight. That was on a uh, Ring City USA card, if you remember those. And I like this kid. He's, 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 he's got um, a dynamite left hook. He, he, he's got this lead uppercut. Um, that he throws, so he, you know he's a bulldog in there, and he and he and he and, he, and he's relentless, uh, and he takes his chances, and so sometimes it pays off, and sometimes it doesn't. And we saw it when it doesn't Gutierrez, but besides that, it, it's paid off in every other fight. He disguises his punches really well. He'll throw like a a a, a body shot, and then hide a hook behind it, or hide the uppercut behind it, and those are his two money shots. Uh, you got Oshaki's got to keep him at arms like You can't fight this fight on the inside uh, because this guy is so strong. And we saw Oshaki in his last fight, which I, I think was just absolutely brilliant performance. Able to get on the inside, work past the long reach of Vargas. 
Now, now you're all going to say Vargas is a much better fighter and much more proven fighter than um, Eduardo Hernandez, which he is. But it's a completely different fight, right? Like he's trying to get on the inside of, of the long range of uh, and uh, and this fight, and or, or trying to get inside of Vargas, trying to get inside the long jab of Vargas. In this fight, it's different. He's trying to keep Eduardo Hernandez, who's a bulldog with a ferocious uppercut, at bay. And like I said, you can't run. Eduardo Hernandez is too good. And, and O'Shaughnessy's got a good gas tank, a really good gas tank. He seems to get better as the fight goes on. So he. But you still can't run from this, this level of fighter for 12 rounds. It's not the amateurs. It's a 12-round world title fight. This guy is going to slow you down. <clears throat> My only question about Eduardo Hernandez is can he survive, right? Like, we haven't really seen him go deep in the fights. Fights usually end early. We've never seen him in with a guy at this level. So putting all those things together, right? And I, and I love Oshaki. Oshaki looks so good in this last fight. He can switch between the conventional and the South Pole stands when he keeps his jab pumping. He stays off the ropes. He's as good as anyone in the sport. I really believe that. I believe he's a pound-for-pound pound talent, right? He took two weird losses on Showbox. I'm going to miss Showbox. Early in his career, one uh, – we're not going to get into it, but – I from a skill standpoint, from an athleticism standpoint, he's so good. And, and he's not feather-fisted, right? Uh, Yakubov, we saw him knock Yakubov down. Uh, we saw him, you know, hurt Vargas a bunch of times. And like I said, he gets better as the fight goes on. Um, just keep moving. Stay off the ropes. Um, you know, he's going to have to stand in in spots in the mid-range. Um, he's got the longer reach in this fight. <laughs> Uh, so, I, you know, I, I don't want him on the inside, but he's got to stand his ground. He's able to walk fighters back. Right? We see him walk back Yakubov, and we saw him uh, walk, pe- walk Vargas back in times, too. So he, he can do that, and he's going to have to do that if he can. If he can't walk him back, it's going to be easy, nice work for him. But I don't expect that to happen over 12 rounds, right? Like maybe later in the fight, if he breaks him down, he can do that. Um, but he's got to keep the jab pumping. He's got to use the – Use use the rope, and, and, and at times he's going to have to stand his ground, right? Don't get on the inside with him, but keep him at arm's length, right? But you can't just run the whole time. So you're going to have to stand in, plant your feet, and try to keep him at that distance. And he's a master at keeping distance. He's got a really explosive lead hook. You know, he, 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 Typically he fights from the conventional stands, but he can do both. Um, we saw in Yakubov, he fought from, from the southpaw stance most of it. Um. So it's something he can do. Um, he, 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 he has really good counters uh, with his power hand, either from the South Pole conventional stance and, and his lead left hook, particularly uh, from the conventional stance. You know, the lead hook from the conventional stance is, is money and explosive. He's so quick and so athletic. He's so twitchy. Um, and he's got enough pop. He's got enough pop where I don't think Eduardo Hernandez is going to be able to walk right through it. Right, I I don't think that's the case, and 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 these odds are starting to grow a little bit uh, for Shaq. He's basically a two to one favorite now, um, and I'm gonna show you how to do this. All right, let, let let's get into making money on this. All right, Oshaki Forster currently right now is minus one ninety five. So you, you bet a hundred, you walk away with fifty one twenty eight. Let me make sure that's right. Does these update. Yeah, 51-28. I, I think the fight's going to go the distance. I, I know Eduardo Hernandez's fights don't go very long. Oshaki Forster fights do. I don't, you know, Oshaki Forster might be able to stop him late. Might be able to stop him late. Um, but I, I don't see that happening. I think it goes the distance. So we're gonna we're gonna take that as it's not gonna pay well, it pays 28.57 on a on a hundred dollar bet. Um then I, I think what, what, what is the best bet here is Oshaki by decision, um, right? That's going to pay seventy six ninety two on a hundred dollar bet. So look, all of these are are not huge paying bets, right? So all in all, you, you're going to walk away with seventy five one twenty five about one hundred fifty five bucks. On this bet, this over ten and a half, you, you might want to cut it because it's paying so little. But I think the fight goes over ten and a half. Um, you know, the best bet here, I, I think, 
is uh, Oshaki by decision is paying almost even money. Um, Oshaki winning the fight on the money line pays two to one. Those aren't bad bets. Um, but, you know, like I said, this is an interesting fight. It's a bull, bull versus Matador fight. It's, it's an intriguing fight. It's a good fight. Um, but I think Oshaki wins it, and I think it goes a distance. So here's what we're paying out. Um, I know last week was a rough week, uh, but we're going to get our money back this week. We're going we're to make a, a, a lot more money. We're going to break down more fights. So uh, please uh, follow, like, follow, subscribe, share 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, for all forms of social media. Um, again, the Boxing Bookie is going to show you how to bring down the house and make money on every big fight. Uh, also subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene. That's completely dedicated to Texas Boxing. It is October 24th, 2023. From Texas to the world, thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.